everybody, it's me, Julia Gulia, back with monthly favorites. I haven't done monthly favorites in a couple of months now because, to be honest with you, I've gotten kind of boring with my makeup and I basically stopped shopping. Like, I still shop, but I haven't really bought a lot of makeup. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, this bracelet. And this was a Christmas gift. And it was the, it's the Paloma Picasso hammered silver bracelet bangle from Tiffany. So the reason why it's been a favorite is I've worn it like pretty much every single day and I've been wearing it by itself. I kind of just like the idea, and you can't really see it, but I just kind of like the idea of just having the one bracelet instead of like a whole armful. And I, I, I think it's, it's just nice and kind of soft. And if you can see, it's not like a bright silver color. It's kind of like a honed finish, and I've just really been liking that. So uh, I also love this ring that I bought, and it's just um, like a cheapy ring, but it's a natural stone, and I just really like how big it is, and I like big, chunky rings. So, yeah, I've been loving those. Um, what else have I been loving this month? As far as skincare goes, this isn't really skincare, but I've been really liking these two products that I got that are Nivea products and they are the Nivea natural beauty beautifying moisturizer and eye care and why I've loved them this month or loved them this month is the fact that they're uh, like kind of illuminators so the eye cream especially is like a pink pearlized finish and I've been wearing that like under my eyes and on my cheekbones and the moisturizer is it's like a tint again like an illuminated it's kind of got like a tanny or tinted moisturizer look to it but it's not it's again just like a moisturizer with a lot of illumination in it you see there and again my i always feel like my face at this time of the year kind of looks i don't know if you can see the light hitting that but my face ends up looking really dull and dead this time of year so putting anything like that on underneath my foundation just kind of makes my face look a little brighter without looking overly dewy so I've liked those I have been meaning to talk to you about this primer so many times and I always forget or I end up editing it out because the rest of the video is so darn long so I've missed telling you about it, and I want to. So it's by Gosh, and it's their Velvet Touch Foundation Primer. Um, it has no preservatives or perfume, and it has something in it called Haloxyl, no, sorry, Matrixyl 3000, and uh, which is a face firming peptide, so it fills in wrinkles and stuff. I don't really know if it fills in wrinkles, but it leaves a really nice kind of matte finish to your skin without being overly dry it just gives a really nice kind of polished look to the skin and helps hold my um foundation on. so though. i really like this one so that's the gosh velvet touch foundation primer and it fills in the wrinkles so what's wrong with that and as far as foundation goes i know that it seems really strange seeing as i have very dry skin but I have absolutely adored using powder foundation this uh, month. Emily Noel 83 actually turned me on to this, which is the NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation. And it's a powder foundation, very light coverage, but it has this beautiful kind of pearl, not pearl, it's not even like a pearlescent. It's just a very nice sheen to the skin, so your skin looks even and just nice and bright and alive and I really really like it uh, the only thing I don't like about it is you can't really apply it wet like they say you can I find that it just makes the surface of the product go really kind of shiny and you don't end up getting enough product on I think it works best dry I think if you had oily skin this would be a really nice uh, finishing powder for you uh, might not get enough coverage for a lot that a lot of people like but I really liked it it was only $14 at Ulta so I really like that I, fell in love with my dream smooth mousse again from Maybelline it, this is just so nice and it the mine color is in number 110 porcelain ivory and it's just a really great foundation for dry skin and the more that I use it the more that I really like it and it it just gives a really nice kind of soft finish to the skin and it's actually 
out of all the foundations that I have, I feel that I get the most coverage out of this one, just because you can build it. And it never looks cakey, and it's just really nice. So I kind of fell in love with that because, again, I'm trying not to buy a lot of stuff. I'm just using what I have and trying to work with the skin that I have at, at the time of year instead of trying to hide it and mask it. And um, these are have been like the talk of YouTube for a while. Um, they're the Instant Age Rewind Dark Circle Eraser Dark Circle Treatment Concealer from Maybelline. And the one that I got was Neutralizer. And it has a yellow undertone to it, so I use it, actually, I don't use it under my eyes. I use it around my nose and on my chin, on my cheeks to cover my redness, and I really liked it. I like the way that it goes on. The only complaint that I have about them is I just, I find that this top gets really, and then, then the lid gets all gunky, and it's just, I find it messy. Like, you get the product into it, and it just stays there forever. Like, so much product goes into the little ball that you can't use it all in one application, so it just kind of sits there for several days, and I don't like that but I, I really liked the product um so I also wanted to I bleh, bleh. so I also decided to give the uh, brightener a try which is a nice pink tone I don't know if you'll be able to see it's got like um no I know the lighting is horrible I'm sorry there you go so it's just got like a very pale salmony pink color and it's very bright under the eyes and works really great over top of my pixie corrector so I've liked that immensely okay um, a few uh, a few blushes that I loved I didn't do a lot of bronzer this month I just embracing the pale and going with it but really liking a nice kind of shimmery cheek and uh, I rediscovered my happy booster blush from Physicians Formula. This one's in natural and it's a really pretty um, pink. It's just a nice bright pink and it has, there you go, and it's got some nice shimmer and sheen to it so it looks really nice on the cheekbones. Um, but also really liked this e.l.f. blush this month. This is in tickled pink and it kind of reminds me of my NARS Deep Throat, which I also rediscovered this month and really liked. So this is the NARS, and then this is the, oh, okay, there you go. This is the ELF, and this is the NARS. The NARS one's a little bit shimmier, shimmerier and a little bit peachier, whereas the ELF one's a little bit pinkier, but both very nice. Again, a, a slight shimmer that looks nice on the cheekbones. Liked those a lot. rediscovered another rediscover my wet and wild palettes um i went out and bought like pretty much all of them and then they just sit in my drawer and i never use them so this month i dragged them out and it started with um this one which is knock on wood which is really pretty kind of um plummy brown colors um the one that i'm wearing today which you can't really see because it's pretty much worn off is walking on eggshells which is probably my least favorite just because the the tones are a little bit too um, like yellow based for me and goldy and just don't suit my skin tone as much as other colors do. But I, what I wanted to tell you about the walking on eggshells is if you have the matte, I love matte palette, which is I heart matte palette, which I have here. If you look at these colors over here, they're very similar to the colors that are in the Walking on Eggshells palette, but they're matte. And I was wearing these the other day. I was copying the um, uh, Pixie Woo video where they did the Adele look for the Grammys. And uh, like minus the heavy eyelashes because I was wearing it to work. But I was wearing these colors and they're very, very pretty. I'll swatch them for you. You can see how highly pigmented they are and these are so good if you guys haven't tried the wet and wilds because you like a snob and you only want to you know use high-end stuff please give them a try and I will tell you if what really helps with these is if you use a good brush Not that for a segue because my next favorite is my brushes um, these brushes from uh, real techniques by Samantha Chapman are my shading brush and the domed shadow brush I've just really been enjoying those to put eyeshadow on um, this month, love the little shader brush for packing on color, and I love the domed shadow brush 
to blend out and to do a nice soft wash of color and it's really dense and really soft and fluffy and I just really liked it. And another Real Techniques brush that I've been loving is my contour brush. I don't use it as a contour because I just find it looks ridiculous on me with this tiny little line. But it is good for um, my trick of just putting the color where my natural blush appears on my cheeks. And it just allows for precise placement instead of having like this big like <clears throat> band of blush on your face. So I've loved those. Um, I've been absolutely obsessed with smell this month, like perfume and I don't know how many times this month I've said to someone, ooh, you smell nice, and I never noticed that before, but now I'm like noticing scents and I'm wearing perfume all the time. And my favorite perfume of the month is, uh, this is a, it's called Precious, and I got it at Five Below, which I know you're like, ooh, Five Below, but it was, it's so nice. It's a knockoff of Vera Wang's Princess, and it's a vanilla scent, and it's just, uh, it's, it's vanilla and like warm and sweet without being like, you know, sweet. It's not like gross sweet like some of those things you spray on and it's like, woo! And um, as far as lipstick goes, I love my Revlon lip butters. My favorite Revlon lip butter is Sugar Frosting. It's a perfect, you can see how much I've used, which is insane for me. And it's a, just a really nice kind of pale um, pinky nude, and I, I really like it. But the other color that I loved this month was this Kate Moss for Rimmel lipstick, and this was number five. And you can see it's a beautiful pink, like rosy pink. But it's so hard, like, it's so interesting because it's bright and dark and light at the same time, if that makes any sense. There you go. So that's it in full intensity. It looks like a, you know, a, kind of like a medium pink color. And then I put it on my lips and it's just a nice light bright color. Not because it's sheer, you can see how pigmented it is there, but just because it's got a really nice kind of undertone to it that doesn't, it doesn't make it go too dark, but it's not too pale, if that makes any sense. It's just a really pretty medium pink color with a nice brightness to it. And it has, um, it's either ginger or green tea scent to it, which is really nice and kind of like a little bit surprising, but really nice lipstick. So I just think, I don't have any, I've got a lot of roses, I've got a lot of deep pinks, but nothing that's um, kind of nice and light and bright like this one without being too pale. I know, my descriptive powers astound you. And lastly, it was also a big month for nail polish for me, and I kind of altered between um, brownie shades like I'm wearing. Uh, the one that I'm wearing today is um, this one, which is Park Avenue from NYC in a New York Minute. And I love these little uh, nail polishes because they're super cheap. They're under $2. They dry in under a minute, and they last just fine. And then I also really love this Gosh. Um, nail polish in number 596 Miss Mole because it's more of a brown tone than like a taupey tone. So I really liked those. And I also liked these kind of pastel -y mauve shades, even though these are like spring shades to me. But um, and it started with um, Sparrow Me the Drama from OPI, which is like a really nice kind of mauve or pinky mauve. Um, I thought that this was a little bit too pastel-y for February. I thought it would be better like in April, but then the more I wore it, I was like, you know what? I actually really like the kind of pale um, mauves right now. Um, but then something that's a little bit deeper is this one from Nina Ultra Pro, which is called Bittersweet. And as I'm holding this nail polish, I'm thinking of the show that I was watching last night called My Strange Addictions or something, and it was about a girl who drank nail polish. She was addicted to nail polish and she drank like four bottles of nail polish a day and spent $75 a day or a week on that nail polish. Isn't that gross? She like had ulcers and all these like, and she would like take and hit and, and it, was, oh, it was so gross. So anyway, this is a really nice kind of um, dusty rose color. Really, really nice. And in the middle of the month, 
I had a real love on for blue nail polish. I was like, oh, I gotta get a new blue nail polish. So of course, everybody knows my favorite blue nail polish, and apparently a lot of other people's favorite blue nail polish is No Room for the Blues from OPI. This is quite old, as you can see. It's about three years old, and I'm running, like, it's starting to get a little bit low. So I'm trying to find something to replace this. And you can see it's a really nice light, bright blue, but there's a, like a white undertone to it. So it, it's not too bright blue, you know, it's just really nice kind of faded denim look. And I love it. Like, um, like a corn blue almost, cornflower blue. So I was trying to find something that's similar to it. You should always take the bottle along with you when you go to do that, because I picked up this one from Nina Ultra Pro, which is called Blue Blaze. I don't like this nail polish, and I love Nina Ultra Pro nail polishes, but it's, it's, I feel like there's an ingredient missing or something. Like, it looks beautiful in the bottle, but when you put it on, it goes on very translucent and dries matte. So you end up looking like you've got a stain on your fingers instead of a nail polish. I don't like it at all. Like, even with a top coat on, and on top doesn't look very good. But my point being, look at how much brighter it is than the No Room for the Blues. And I liked this color as well. This is Midnight from Revlon Color State. It's more like a midnight blue. So. Yeah, so that was um, me for the month of February. Uh, as always, you guys are my favorites. Like, you all rock. Those of you who are, like, standing by me. Um, through thick and thin, mostly thick. Um, yeah, you guys are great. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.